Hey guys, it's Damien from Marketing Food Online, and I'm super excited about the video I'm actually going to be sharing with you guys tonight. Uh, this is one that I've actually been wanting to do for quite some time. It is going to be my 10 lessons that I learned when I actually opened our first retail bakery, and I did it uh, on my own with my wife. Uh, we actually had quite an experience uh, when we did this. So I'm going to share with you 10 lessons that I learned from opening it as well as closing it and then transitioning to an internet business. That's my wife there and our three compartment sink. <laughs> so this space, let me tell you really quick about the space that we're in. We had a, a very limited budget. My wife and I got laid off in 2008 at the same time, and it kind of forced me in a way to pursue this goal of mine of having a business. I wasn't quite sure exactly what I wanted to do but I wanted to take the thing that I knew the best and I knew how to do, which was uh, bake goods and candies and, and sweets and such, and create a business from that. So this kind of forced us into a very fast predicament that we ended up going through quite a bit of our own savings, to be quite upfront and honest with you. Um, but I'm going to explain some of the things that really was a lesson and some of the things that kind of benefited me. I'm very glad that's me uh, about 10 years ago, actually. <laughs> um, so this is a space... It was 500 square feet. It, is very, it was very small. It was a space that was available. It was actually a space that we could afford. Um, and we had to negotiate with the landlord, who was a super nice guy. But we ended up having to negotiate for the space. And believe it or not, for just a few hundred dollars a month, we were able to rent this space. But it was a great experience. I would not change a single bit of it. I loved every moment of it. We, uh, my wife and I, uh, that's her as well, we actually went into this space gutted it out. We uh, we cleaned it up. We actually did the painting ourselves. We did a lot of the work. We did the crown molding. We decorated. We did everything ourselves. Why? Because of our budget. Okay. So let me go through this list and I'll explain to you while you kind of look at this little slideshow of that space. Um, so what we did is that we picked a location. Number one, the most important thing in my opinion and my experience, because I went through this and I experienced it, would be the location, okay, above and beyond a uh, business plan, above and beyond even your budget, anything that you do before you actually do this, your location needs to really be uh, researched, looked at, and, and kind of optimized, if you will, making sure that the traffic you need to sustain your business is there. And I'm going to be 100% honest with you, the location we had was good, but it was not great. We could have gotten a better location, but what do you know when you've never run a business and you're going to open a bakery from scratch? So the location, location, location. In real estate, you always hear that, but let me tell you something. When it comes to a food business, it's especially a brick and mortar retail location in a bakery, uh, the location is paramount. It is so pivotal to the success of your business. I'm gonna give you two, there's only two places in the world that you can put a bakery. And I'm gonna explain to you what I mean by that. Number one, you can put it in a shopping plaza with what's known as an anchor store. Why? Because you're gonna rely on the foot traffic. Foot traffic needs to be there all the time, okay? From the time you open to the time you close, you need to have foot traffic. That is what an anchor store does for your business. And it, what is an anchor store? Okay, if you uh, an anchor store is a shopping plaza that's built around a either like a big grocery chain or it's built around a big retailer. And then you see to the left and to the right attached to the building all kinds of other small mom and pop businesses or other little retail stores. That's what an anchor store plaza is, okay? So a shopping plaza that has a big name, let's say a Target in the middle, and you've got all kinds of shops around the side of it. That's what it is. That's what you want to shoot for here, guys, okay? This is the second option. Where we opened our location is the second option I was going to tell you about, and it was independently freestanding building. That, causes, that poses a little bit of a problem and a challenge when you have a bakery or any type of food business for that matter. Why? Because... You are relying upon traffic to come specifically to your location when you're by yourself. If you're in a plaza with an anchor store, you're going to get free traffic. You have foot traffic because of the other retail stores. You follow me? So what you need to do, and I would recommend because we learned this, I'm not going to say the hard way, I just say we just learned it, um, is that you really need to get yourself in a location where other retailers are, where other traffic will be, Okay. And again, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I'm going to make these some top 10 uh, points to touch on. And then from there, we can move on uh, to another video more specifically about each one. Next one is the budget. We went through quite a bit of our own personal money, and that was fine. You know what? At the time, it was, it was a decision we made, and we did it. And I, again, I wouldn't change it. 
So budget, make sure, figure out what you have available. If you're going to dive into this, you need to have a budget, okay? That doesn't mean you're going to have all the money up front, and that's okay. You got to be understanding also that you're going to learn as you go. Don't expect to have all the answers, and you need to be open to the success and the failure that you may have to go through. Remember, it's all all the all part of the experience. Okay, so if your your budget, if you're really tight on a budget, well then save. You know, if tomorrow's not a good day to do this, then you know you wait a few more months, maybe a couple more years. Don't wait forever though. You do need to make a decision and start. Okay, the next one up is your menu. Uh, you are better off if you could focus on one specific type of niche, like a one specific type of category of baked goods. Don't try to offer donuts, cookies, uh, pastries, ice cream, a whole bunch of things at the same time if you're not making it or you can't make it, okay? Be able to make what you can offer and be down the road, you can always expand. But when you first start, that's a, by the way, that's a shot of our our small uh, our cookie um, case there. <laughs> so, so down the road, you can always evolve. You can change your plans. You can mix it up. And, and there's the little corner. So on the right there is our little, our, was our little bakery. And it was part of it. There was a hair salon next to us and a couple other places, but it wasn't again, part of an anchor store. That was, that was the big challenge. Okay. So next up, you've got your menu business plan. Once you've established um, your location, now you can begin to think about that business plan. What is it? Where does it? You want to be in the next few few years, three to five years? What kind of menu do you want to have? Do you want to expand your location? Um, basically, the idea of the vision you have for it. And remember, it's not in stone. You can always change it. Okay, you don't have to have all the parameters figured out. So the next one up is equipment, and that's my my beautiful wife uh, showing the back of our case. The equipment, you need to be aware of what kind of equipment you need, okay? Every single scenario is different. What we used in our facility with the three compartment sink and the type of small case, I ordered all that and I actually arranged all that. I figured all that out on my own because of this space that we have. So be aware of what type of space you have available because that'll dictate what type of equipment that you will need. So the next thing up, do it yourself. Figure out as much as you can do. Me and my wife, literally, like I said, we painted the walls, as you saw at the beginning of this. We did as much as we humanly could and possible to make this place work, okay? And it saved us a lot of money. Um, and it really just kind of brought out the real passion of being an entrepreneur is creating something from nothing. And that's what we did. And now that we've evolved uh, nearly 11 years later, you know, we've learned a lot and we've experienced a lot. So it was definitely worth it. Okay, something I just touched on a little while ago, be open to change. Don't be steadfast in your menu or what you offer or how you operate the first, second, or third year. You know, third, fourth, fifth year, you may be changing and evolving into something bigger than you were. So be open to that. Don't be so stuck in the rut, if you will. Once you find something that works, sticking with it is good. But always be open to expanding new opportunities, maybe new menu items, new horizons up. Okay? Now, marketing. You need to figure out how to get yourself out there. And doing this, really in this day and age, is going to be online. You need to be online. You need to be available um, through the internet, through all social media platforms, websites, and everything in between. You don't necessarily have to sell anything online, but you need to have a presence online to let people know you're there, okay? So uh, we've covered that. we covered that. Okay, the other thing you need to think about is the hours, you need to be aware. When we opened this, um, I, I was literally working probably 12, 13 hours a day easily, trying to make it work, uh, building up our menu, uh, getting the advertising, marketing, everything that we did. I did that, and my wife was the head baker. She made all the stuff and the products. So be available, and you need to understand that this is not a super quick endeavor where you can just put a couple hours here and there. If you're willing to open a retail bakery or retail food establishment, you're going to be pulling a lot of hours. Next up, finding out who is going to be a part of running it. Okay. Once it's up and running, you can get some family and friends. If you can get people who can help you within the family, that's going to be a big plus. My, my parents actually came in once in a while. They would help us out. My mom was a trooper. She used to come in and she would help us do cookies and all that good stuff. So definitely something to think about is how much time is family and friends are going to be able to help you out initially. You know, and you may not be paying them up front. That's the thing is if you can find good help who can at least help you get it started and get it off the ground, that is an asset and it's huge. It's very, very big. Okay. So be open to these things and understand that if you're going to be doing some type of an eatery, that's the outside, by the way, it's 
our custom sign that we had made for our shop. It was actually called Amadeo's, by the way. That was my dad's name um, that we used on there uh, for the name of the bakery. So, And as you saw the pictures through there, we had a handful of uh, gelato and cookies and a lot of different pastries. So, But I wanted to share this with you guys really quick. I'll wrap that up. I'm going to break down the rest of this in a later video. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope uh, I got right to the point. Take care.